And welcome back to Home Wizards, where we love to help the spaces you call home, improving your home and improving your life. I'm Cindy Dole. Hey, I'm Eric Stromer. And you're, hold your, raise your hand. It's raised. I am now a pond owner. I am a proud <laughs> pond owner and, a, and awaiting fine plants in the See, water, all right, in the so fresh water. I think that I kind of got you pumped up on ponds. Because you saw the pond in our front yard. Well, and of you know course the garden shows. And, and, and I have to tell you, yes, you did. And you, yours is a great example of what when it's done well, and it looks like it's been there for a thousand years. It's you great. know, you you know what you realize through this whole thing. Nature does an amazing job creating sure the stuff that we call mm-hmm. water features. Mm-hmm. And to emulate it, it requires a whole lot of thought. You just can't throw it together. So the fun part was not only, in our case, getting, we had it professionally installed, our pond, uh, about four years ago now. And the the exciting part is how ponds evolve over time. And they really do. They get better through time. And so when they when the uh, the professional installers put it in, they ha- they had certain plants, a few of them, that came with the purchase of the pond, right? right? But then I went out and got more plants and kept adding and adding and now it's fun to see how the mosses that grow and kind of trickle over the rocks and look like it's water itself spilling into the pond. Yeah, you know? and and to that point, I think people should realize that when you first do this, you're going to probably buy a little bit smaller container yeah. size plants and then they grow. You're, you're expectation is going to be like, it's got to look like Gilligan's Island right yeah. now. And it doesn't. It takes it's a gonna, while. It's going to take some time. And, and these plants, they do, they, they multiply. So for instance, some of the different plants, we're going to go through a great shopping list to keep handy for your, your pond, your water feature, whether it's full sun or, or shade. But yeah, absolutely. If I wanted the jungle now, and what you can do is you can add a few containers you know, with maybe some some bamboo or some other tropical looking plants to make you feel like you've got that lush kind of barrier. Right. But yeah, you don't want to go out necessarily and get hundreds of plants because they're going to grow. It's they're going to take too, over. It's pricey too, boy. Yeah. It is, it is. And the bigger the container, obviously, the more the money. Yeah. So, so. so let's talk about some of the different kinds of plants to uh, to think about because a pond without plants is really not a water garden without the water plants. It's not going to benefit as well because it's going to it's going to keep the ecological balance. Right. And it also softens the edges looking like in nature, like, and it, like and a it lake. And it can also conceal some of the liner aspects. of the, You know, what happens is that you've got this liner coming up and around the edges, the rocks are on the top. You try and build up the interior to cover the liner. And sometimes there are areas you just can't get to. But to your point, mm-hmm. with those plants that are submerged in the mm-hmm. water, it can mm-hmm. obscure some of that. So you want all of that. You want yeah. the plants, you know, almost like a bog-like uh look where yep. some of the plants are going to be kind of nestled right against the sides and then you're going to have some plants that are submerged completely in the at, almost at the base of the pond or you could elevate them and put them um, on top of a rock that's at the base of the pond right you know because you think oh my gosh the, the pond plant is completely underwater how can it breathe but that's what they like some right. of these lilies right, right. they're completely underwater and then they have there's the floating kind and yeah. there's the oxygenating plants that's right and then the other thing too is that i think people don't Maybe not be aware of this, but those containers have to sit up on something like a cinder block or a rock. But if the water is clear, which mine happens to be crystal clear, good, by good. the way, then you're going to see all that stuff too. So you have to obscure the base that you're going to put these pots of plants on and that's with what, more rocks. Or with, or, or with some or, of these floaties. Yeah. So let's talk about the different yeah. things. So first you want to have definitely the kind of plants that are um, that are going to be completely submersed by water. And uh, the, the deal with that is it's going to really add a lot of the, the good biology to your pond. And so if here you have, let's say it's a water lily and it's completely submersed by water, um, you, and like you say, it's going to be in that little black container that you bought it in. Right. So you want to hide it. So that's where you're going to, if not, you know, kind of uh, disguise it with some rocks. But you can get some of these floating plants, which I know you like the hyacinth. Yeah, love that. The hyacinth, or there's a plant called water le- lettuce. Yeah, that's the thing that's great for the top. It looks, it looks almost like iceberg lettuce. That's right. And those sit on top, and you can get like about four or five or maybe ten of them, and now you don't see that black container that's holding the water lily. Right. But the trick is you anchor the floaties with a little weight of some kind, maybe a small rock and the fishing line, mm-hmm. and you tie it to the plant and weight it down. Is that is that what they do? That's what you do because I was wondering how how you keep it from floating all into because a the corner. pump because the pump and the, the motion of the water it's all going to go to one end. Really, that's right. So you get the clear fishing line and you put you can use a washer as a weight it would be disguised. So or what a you're rock. saying now is I have to get a full scuba gear <laughs> with a tank and be under no, the water. No, I, no, I no. think I'm going to just live. It's like remember the scene in the Graduate where the guys just sitting yeah. Dustin Hoffman's just on the bottom of the of the pool. Yeah, that's me. But this is going to be great because it's going to, the plants, 
become a natural filtration, and it's going to help uh, compete with algae. Right. For, for, you know, because algae is going to want its nourishment, and that's why that's why you get those algae blooms because you don't want your clear pond and all of a sudden turn no. green. No, kidding me. So the plants are going to be going to war with the algae, and it will keep it nice and crystal clear. Great. Okay. So you also so you're going to get those. Now, now, what are the ones that that have the the vibrant like purple flowers? They're some sort of a lily pad with a flower coming out. What is that? Those are water lilies. That's the water. Yeah, there's, okay. I mean, there's dozens of varieties of water lilies, and they're fragrant a little bit, aren't they? Some can be fragrant. Yes. Like we have a night blooming lily, and it smells like jasmine. So really? that's kind of a cool one. Beautiful. Then you also want the bog or surrounding plants, and these are the like bog lilies or different types of reed plants that you could picture at a lake, you know, in nature, sure. wherever you love to go lake to a Stromer. lake. Stromer. Okay, there you go. Uh-huh. And so these will thrive right on the perimeter. You might want to plant them right into the ground itself, or if you have that little pocket like you described, the liner that's up and over the side yeah. of, of the uh, the surface, right? And now it's it's kind of, there's a little pocket of the water that's coming from the pond, and you can put that reed-like plant in there. Mm. And it's going to, you're not going to need to water it, because that is getting the nutrients from the pond. Oh, I see. Okay. See, here's what a mistake I may have made. I think my walls are too sheer. They're not gra- graduated enough. You know what I mean? Like you don't a, have a like shelf like sh- No. Mm. It's just a flat surface, and, and then it just down. drops down like almost two and a half feet. Well, you know, over and time. And that's where I have to stack the rocks. Right. See, that's the... Pr- that's, uh, so some of the... <laughs> <laughs> just, that just makes, means I got to go back to the rock store. And, you know, and, and so while you're there, you're, you're going like, okay... Um, I don't have enough rocks. I need another pallet. And the guy's like, okay, that'll be $307. And you're like, are you, th- th- really? And mm-hmm. then they put it in the truck and you got to haul it back there. And, you know, so basically this just spells I got to do more work. Well, it's, or it's, it's get a hot, so much water total... lettuce that you can't even see the bottom of the pond. But that could work, couldn't yeah. it? What else you got for me? Well, <laughs> come on. <laughs> I think you need pond therapy. I think uh, I need a week off. Uh, so the bog plants, I mean, you want to get something like cattail. And also, love, oh, I love an that. iris. You know the iris. Yeah. You talked about a, fl- a purple flower. The iris. Picture having those all around the sides, or, okay. the, or the non-invasive bamboo. And so that's going to give it that natural bog lake look that you want. Now, right? I had the bamboo at, at another house of mine that went nuts and kind of just took over. So those have to be in containers. Well, no, you can. There's there's certain types that are non that are non-invasive. Just make oh, sure okay. you get what's called the clumping. You want the clumping bamboo or non-invasive. Okay, great. Okay, so so now again you have the the types of flowers that are completely submerged or the the uh, lily pads or ponds I should right. say plants and then you want the, what's called marginal plants and these are not all the way down at the base but if you did have that shelf like we almost have stepping stones that so layers almost like an ocean shelf. That's how our pond works. So we have like three layers, right. lower, medium. So the marginal plants are going to be now at that medium level. And that's going to help not only create some more ground cover uh, around the pond. It's mm-hmm. going to give it more height, but it's also going to remove, uh, again, the, nit- the, the nitrates that can cause uh, the algae bloom. Gotcha. So that's something good. And then all this wildlife, you've already said that you're getting a lot of hummingbirds. Oh, man. Uh, it's going to bring dragonflies and, you know, all kinds of beautiful creatures are going to come. But also it's going to bring possibly some bad creatures. Last night, a bobcat came to our pond. Come on. We have koi in our pond. I didn't see it, but... um, There was a bobcat in your pond. There's a... Yeah. Bob, not in the pond, but came just, came, just was crude, walking well, by. I, I don't care if it's near or in. It's so still that, a little that's dangerous. An, that's another reason why you want to have these plants because they become a great hiding place for your for your koi when you get them. Sure. And there's other things you can do to protect your fish from predators. So when we come back, we'll talk about a little bit more of some of the plants and things to do to to keep your fish safe and how to you know keep. You the just walked away. out and there was a bobcat in your it by was your a small one. Well, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's still, there's still a wild animal, right? But <laughs> yeah. so, oh my goodness! I know. <laughs> and the thing you got to watch out for those uh, those egrets or herons that come. Yeah, they're aggressive. They come in. They kind of harpoon. They're like they, PTA moms. They, 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 will... they, 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 they totally. Yeah, aggressive. So that's why you want to have all kinds of plants <laughs> on your pond. So we'll talk about some of the other specific kinds, like the. You definitely need to have the elephant leaf. The elephant plants, they're better better known as the taros. Oh, with the big leaves. The, the big, big that looks like a jumbo, yeah. you know, Dumbo the elephant. They're Love really, those. really pretty. So yeah. we'll talk about that and some of the other types to protect your pond and, and your fish. All right. You're listening to Home Wizards, Eric Stromer, Cindy Dole. The fun continues here. Don't you go away. We're just getting started. Can't you see my 
Welcome back. You're listening to Home Wizards. Cindy Dole here. Hey, I'm Eric Stromer. Uh, hopefully your pond isn't black water. No, it's Not clean yet. and crystal clear. Yay, and fresh and pretty. And, yes, it and is. yay, you did it. Yay, yay Eric did his pond. But we're trying to help you now get the, the plants that you need because it's you know, you've, you've only just begun. The adventure comes with... What are you, the carpenters? Really? <laughs> it's only just begun because truly there are... Um, hobbyists or pond enthusiasts out there. They're clubs that celebrate ponding. I mean, it really is a hobby. And you get into it and you go and you learn how to make your pond just better and better every year. And, and, that, and that's what I love about this whole thing because, you know, you can do it in phases. You yeah, know, I'm, totally. I mean, I've done the landscaping. I've got the water working. Now I can do the fun stuff, which is the, it's these it's this it's the delicate plants. ecosystem that you can yeah. now create with yeah. these water plants. So let's talk about some of the other plants to not only make it a thriving, clear, beautiful pond, but to protect when you do get your koi from predators because they need a hiding place. They yeah. need several places to hide. They have to have a little cave. They need made, caves. Made of st- fashioned of and, stone. And the way that the lily pads float on top, where you get the um, the hyacinth which has these great roots that dangle down that look almost like um, feathers. Yeah. And, and the, the fish love to feed on that, and that keeps the, the algae away, but they can hide because now the, now the predators aren't going to see them. It's like they have you know, an umbrella over them. They're and I would hiding. imagine they want get to out, get out from under the sun, don't they? Yeah, they like some... Exactly. A little bit they and like they little, little shade. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, so here, I, I think you need to have for sure get the thing called the papyrus. And yeah. this is really one of the classic classic bog-like garden plants. It, it almost has like an umbrella feature. You can picture it. You know, the plant itself almost looks like you're holding Kind of like a little sombrero. Like a sombrero that's or right. like a little one of those little cocktail umbrellas, you know, uh-huh. that are sitting in yeah. your little uh, Mai Tai. And that's tie. that beautiful <laughs> orange color that would attract the hummingbird, right? No, this is pure green. This is pure What's green. That? Yeah. Oh, that's the, the papyrus oh, is oh, just, that one. And, and as it grows, it, when you buy it in the container, you're going to see about five or six of these little umbrellas, so to speak, shooting out from the base. I see. And that really grows. And so you can you can grow it in the soil or you can grow it off, you know, it, keep it in the container. Got and it. it works for both full sun or partial shade. So I think you've got to get this one. So that would that would line the perimeter of yeah, the pond. That'll give you okay, that bog. That gives you that bog feel. Okay, gotcha. Then you want to get some water lilies and you can go online because there again it's there's so much enthusiasm for ponding out there that you can find some really unusual ones. But you can also find them from different garden centers that might have the basic lily pads or if you go to a specialty store that has that sells fish you know and all pond supplies they sure. might also have uh, some of now, these. Now do they ship these kind of plants? Ever? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do, they yeah. do? Yeah. Okay. And so you want to get a really great a couple of these. I, I mean I think we should get even like maybe four or five of them. Now what's the price point on one of these guys? $25. At least up to up to a hundred dollars. It Looks depends like on how. Getting, I'll be getting exactly one. But they have sales. And, oh, and no, you're going to get more. You got to get more than okay. one. But these guys do great in sun. And in fact, if if you have too much shade, they won't they won't flower. And when you are getting these lilies, make sure that you buy the fertilizer. They're special aquatic plant fertilizer tablets, and you put it inside the container, deep into the soil, maybe two of them, and they dissolve over time. It's kind of like a time release, and it really makes a difference. It's going it to make It's going to make those But it won't, it won't hurt the fish if I get No, 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 no. Okay. It's, it's, right. it's all works together. Yeah, gotcha. it's all like the natural stuff. And I think it even gives the fish more youthful skin. <laughs> yeah, your fish seem very youthful. I mean, they don't they do not look 50. No wrinkles not, at all. Not one little iota of not a wrinkle. Not a line. Nope. <laughs> Another really great do, one. And dewy, I would imagine because of, well, dewy. they're in water oh, yeah. after all. Anyway. Well, they get the fish oil, you know, the yeah, fish oil do. treatment. Yeah. <laughs> another uh, another great jewel in the water garden is to have um, the hyacinth, the water hyacinth. Uh, sometimes again, it can be a little invasive, but the, these those roots that this they, it shelters the fish. It mm. looks like boa feathers, and uh, then the flower that blooms, it comes up and it's kind of a lavender purple with a little bit of white accent, and it's very very fragrant. It smells almost yeah. like lavender. So yeah. you need to get you need to get a cluster of those, and those are maybe a few bucks a piece. So when okay. you go to the store, don't just get one; get about ten of them. And those are going to float on the top of the pond, and then you want to maybe get the fish line and secure it with a weight at the base. Okay. Basically, I'm looking at about 300 bucks, aren't I? No. You, well, most. I think you can do it for less. You want to get the iris, get the 
try to get the uh, the one with the deep purple color. It's going to look gorgeous. It has that kind of velvety black to purple bloom with the yellow markings. You can picture that. And that also uh, works really well. Uh, you can put that on the sides of the pond or you can put it on a stone so it's sitting right near your waterfall. Mm. You know, it loves being in water. And you have to get the cannas. Those are those beautiful, really... That's the one I thought you were talking about originally. That's well, the, the orange-red yes. flower. Well, so right. the foliage itself is beautiful. These leaves, they look so tropical. And, you know, a lot of people that don't even have ponds, you'll see these on, on the front yards of homes mm-hmm. throughout California. They do well in uh, in sun. They love the sun. And some of the cannas do well in part shade. So just take a look at the label or talk to whoever, you know, is selling this to you. Um, but the orange flower is beautiful. They, they come in red and orange and yellow and pink. And look for the variegated leaf because the, you can kind of mix it up. Okay. You're going to get it. The, Then you want to get the elephant. Get the elephant leaf or the elephant plant. And that's these large leaves that look like an elephant ear. Now, if you're in a shady area, you might want to get what's called the imperial taro. And that has the mainly limish green elephant leaves. Mm-hmm. But for you, because Eric, I know that you're, your sun, area is I have very, a lot of sun, yeah. you want to get the one that looks almost burgundy purple. Because that can handle full sun. Is that the black magic taro? That's the black magic. Got a black magic taro. <laughs> or woman or yeah, something. Right. <laughs> it always gets back to music. Yeah, it really does. But I, I want to see that on your pond because it's going to Yeah, that's going to make a huge difference. And, and as they shoot up, they have these shoots, the stems that, that gets really tall. And then as they grow, it just keeps multiplying and multiplying on their own. And then you can take some of them and, and replant it. You can separate them at the base. And put them in another location, and, and they multiply. You can. You can. Okay. So see, when you spend that two hundred dollars, you're making a good investment because it's they're going to keep expanding like these. The cannas keep having babies, and so you can take those out of the ground as they grow, mm-hmm. and then put it on the other side. I see. So see, you're becoming your own garden center. So now, now, are you? Did you plant these in the bog? edge of the pond that ha- that's your shallow area? A little bit of that and also ac- extended beyond it. So some of these we water, but we tried to get as many of these water-loving plants always inside the liner that's being fed by the pond water. I see. See? Huh. Okay. Because then it's 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 working to help keep, keep the pond wet, yeah. nutritious gotcha. and you aren't having to water the plants. Got it. Love it. Uh, let's see. Another really good one to consider is the dwarf papyrus. That again, those those tufts that look like little umbrellas, um, and the dwarf bamboo. This also is excellent for border planting. It's compact. It does well um, in the smaller ponds, and it's going to give you that kind of bog look. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and now I know you want to have a moss, and mosses. Many of the mosses are more shade loving, but you can get some Scotch moss um, that will handle some sun because you want it. You need to have the moss because it kind of grows up and over the rocks, and it looks like it's. What nature intended, like okay, it's Okay, hold on, hold on. Let me back up for a second. Yeah. So when you're doing these, these like the papyrus and all that stuff, are mm. they in pots still? No, some of ours are in you the- You pull those yeah, out and yeah. put them in the soil. In the little pocket of the soil. Uh-huh. And the little pocket of the soil is in the pond. Right. But it's not going under the water level. Right. So in our pond, we have- the, and they, when we had it professionally installed, they, they dug up this hole that had two or three shelves. I see. And then they put the liner up and over the forest end, but they extended it by about six inches. And it's that, liner. It's that extended part. And then there's some mud or some soil that's now trapped on top of I that see. barrier. And so there's a little bit of the water that oozes in there, but it's not... But is, it, is the water coming from your, from your from sprinklers the or from, from the, the pond? From the pond. Really? Yeah. Interesting. See? You can come over and look at the pond and, and take pictures. I might dress. <laughs> you know what I might do? I might get a bobcat off it and come steal some of your water plants, <laughs> pretending to be some wild animal. You would look at. You'd be a cute bobcat. Just put a, maybe like a terry cloth <laughs> towel. We'll never but speaking know. of speaking of predators, I mean that's one of the worst fears as a pond owner and a, as a koi lover, is that you think, oh my gosh, some bad critter. Although that's what nature does. I mean they're not bad, but you know what I mean. You want to save your koi, whether it is a bobcat or a raccoon. I think a rac- I I have a pond on the other side of they're my. They're going to come. I think a raccoon came and took the, one of my see, fish. The, so what you want to do, there's all kinds of devices. We've got this thing called a scarecrow. But when you go online, they've come up with everything from a floating alligator. I mean, it's a little plastic thing that looks like an alligator. It's kind of like, 
You know, you know the, ju- the jungle ride at well, Disneyland. Well, it's like the, it's the aquatic it's version a, of the owl that is fake. It's a decoy. Up, it's, yeah, a, it's, right. a it's a plastic decoy. They even have plastic koi that float in your pond. So supposedly when a heron comes by, it'll swoop down and get the plastic koi and give all your real koi a chance to escape. You know, I don't know if that works. But for us, we have this thing called the scarecrow. Huh. And it's about 150 bucks, And it is an automatic motion-censored sprinkler that jolts out. Bah, 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 bah. Ba, 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 ba. Oh really? And it, and it's you have it kind of hidden. For us, we have it hidden by some of the papyrus, and it's at the at the head or the top of the pond where the waterfall leads. And so as people are walking in, because our pond is in our front yard, you know, we will greet you with our pa 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 pa. No, we turn right. it off during the day, but we turn it on like at dusk. So it senses motion. It's and, a motion and sensor. Water sprays and people it sprays or it, animals. It, exactly. It'll, huh. it'll get people to... But it won't hurt them. It just no, scares them. It's just a scary it's a great deer idea. or whatever. But So check it out. Make yeah. sure that before you get the koi, you have the pond protectors. You want to have a cave. You want to have the plants that are going to give them that, that umbrella of, of hiding. You know? right. And then get like some of these pond protector devices. That's, a, that's an amazing invention, isn't it? It's when fun. you think about it. Yeah. A lot huh. to think about. But they're part of your family. Your pond is now an extension of your family, you know. Boy, is you it You got ever. a responsibility. Yeah, boy, and it's, and it's on me. It's all on me. You know, they. I can't even get Better them to put the... Better start saving for college. I can't, I can't even get them to put the milk back in the refrigerator. How are they going to help me with my papyrus? <laughs> well, I think it's going to work out. So let's, I, I do, too. I want you to get some more pictures for us, and we'll put it on Facebook. I am and, so proud of it. It's gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. It really is. And we do have, by the way, right now, pictures of Eric's pond uh, in the making. If you go to yourhomewizards.com. And I think I have some pictures of my pond up there, but I'll put some more up this weekend so you can see how ours has evolved and yeah, that's right. Ideas. Yours is sort of like th- two or three years later yeah. after you've amended it with all that and great stuff. And it's just, stuff. it's so much fun. So great. if you don't have a pond, consider it. If you can't afford a pond, you can always get one of those whiskey barrels, you know, and try with water lilies and hyacinth and, and some of these water plants to have your own little small on the deck water garden. Yeah, and when you look at the website and see these these ponds that we're talking about, I probably have about twenty five to $3,000 in yeah. with two days of labor for a guy digging and all the pond pumps and all that other stuff. So so keep cool. that in mind. All right. Yep. Coming up, we're going to talk about patio furniture because it is all about outdoor living right now, right? Eric Stormer, Cindy Dole, Home Wizards. Don't go away because we're still having fun. We hope you are too. Listening to Buckle.